Good afternoon guys, Troy from Washrot, New Zealand. Um, just got down to the workshop, do a little bit of work. As you see, we've got our trucks parked up. There's one there, two there, three, four, plus we've got one of our clean right vans in the workshop at the moment. Just wanna do a quick video. I've been getting lots of requests about information about how a pressure washer works. Basically, new people into the industry and wanna know how a pump works. So I'm gonna break down a pump. This pump might be bigger or smaller than you're currently using, but most pumps are exactly the same. So I'll turn the camera around and show you what I'm working on. Okay guys, so here's one of our old pumps. Uh, this pump has had it, it's not rebuild, rebuildable, it's not worth it. But this is a Comet RW5530. We have, oh, at least a hundred of these in the wash right fleet. Most trucks have two, and most trucks have these pumps. Um, so just to give you a quick rundown how they work, all pumps are run off a motor. This motor here is way too small to run any of these two pumps but they're all the same. So basically either a single or V-twin cylinder motor. 90% of mine are Honda. I think all are Honda at the moment. Um, so pretty much the same. Obviously you have your drive shaft with your keyway. Obviously this drive shaft and keyway is too small for these pumps. And then you have the option of a direct drive pump or a pump that must run through a gearbox or a reduction box whatever you guys want to call it. As you see on a direct drive, there is a female slot with the keyway. The keyway obviously turns this shaft, which obviously turns the crank of the pump. This one here doesn't have it. So this one here actually has to have a, a, um, a reduction box. And the reduction box bolts to here, and then the reduction box bolts to the pump. So that's basically the two types of pumps you have. Obviously your direct drive or you have your reduction box you do also have belt drive belt drive is just basically the exact same pump as this one here the only difference is instead of the, the gearbox reducing the engine speed down to the speed of the pump you actually have a ratio drop in the belt and the pulley size so guys i'll get this camera set up and i'll show you what these pumps do and how they work okay guys hope you can see the pump Obviously, I'll break down the pump from obviously the back to the front of the pump or the head of the pump. Obviously, on this side, you see how I've taken this off. This is your bearing and your main seal. Obviously, the blue thing you see in there is literally your seal. It does push out. There's an O-ring there and you've got a seal. You've obviously got your race and you've got your, you've got your conical bearing. That you can see there, that bearing is very similar to the wheel bearing in your trailer. And there's obviously your race. Now, these pumps do come in either left or right hand drive. Um, the side that actually powers the pump, you can swap it over. It is a mission. Um, you literally have to undo the con rods, pull the crank out, swap it over, put all the bearings back in there, reconnect everything back up. I don't recommend it. It's not worth it in my opinion. Just like a car engine, you have a crank in here. The crank basically drives your three plungers. So what I'll do, obviously, this here is encased in oil. That's why that rag's covered in oil. When I pulled that out, the last of the oil drained out. So these are just literally your head bolts. Just like a head on a car. Okay, so inside the head, you see these three big brass nuts what these do is these hold in your check valves under each one of these three and under each one of these three at the bottom is one of these check valves these check valves are what basically open and close allows water to come up from the low pressure side to the high pressure side of the pump it allows it to get compressed it allows it to get pushed out you might be able to see down the hole there, there is a black O-ring. That O-ring seats around that groove. And if you see on the inside of the nut, there is a little groove and the little nipple, it sits in there. So this nut, other than sealing, it just locates that check valve in place and allows it to do its job. Okay. OK, 
Okay, what was dropped wasn't important. Okay, guys, so up in here, this is the head of the pump. And these are the plungers. These are what compresses the water. Ceramic plungers. Um, these ones here have a bent con rod. So basically this uh, center plunger is a little bit crooked and it's basically eating up the bore and we get a lot of metal filings in the oil. So that's why this pump's not worth getting rebuilt. Um, what we pay for them, they're cheap enough just to replace. So basically how the water works is this is the low pressure side, the bottom of the pump. Water comes in the bottom. The check valves open on each individual cylinder at different times. Allows water to come up into this chamber here. Obviously as the plunger comes forward, it compresses that water, opens up the high pressure valve and allows that water to get compressed down the, the high pressure line to the gun. Um, the pretty basic pumps haven't really changed in many, many years. They do work well if you maintain them. Obviously these ones here aren't too bad. Um, obviously, but the, the connecting rod for the plunger is bent, so it is shafted. Now you'll see a lot of pumps, guys, that will have a built-in um, unloader valve, pressure regulator valve, whatever you want to call them, built into the pump head itself. I would highly recommend not touching it. Um, unloader valve can go out infrequent. You might go through them once a week, once a year, once never. But when they do go out, you don't want to have to be replacing the entire head if it's molded into the head. Um, I don't have any here to show you, but I'll upload a picture right now to show you what you want to stay well away from. Um, these pumps here, I think, are way too small for house washing. Uh, this is a ZWD 4040, so four gallons per minute at 4,000 PSI. It's just way too small. Um, these are the smallest pumps that we run. These are five and a half gallons at 3,000 PSI. Um, great pump, very reliable. Um, as I said, we have a hundred or so around the fleet. Um, very reliable pump. Now on the front of the pump, these six, sorry, these eight bolts are where we took out the, uh, the head bolts. You see here, you have a brass nut. These are just plugs. These here are just a straight opening inside the pump head, as you see in there. And it basically comes straight in here. That's what all it does, straight inside the pump head. And this is where you can connect a pressure gauge if you like. Um, I have seen some people install thermo release valves there as well. We don't, um, something else to go wrong. But that's basically the basics of a pump, guys. If you know anything about a engine and how an engine works with a crank, connecting rods, um, pistons, instead of pistons, they're plungers, and a head, um, just like a car. As you see, guys, there's uh, no head gasket. There's no actual gasket material. So it's just basically the pressure of these bolts, and they are torqued down a fair bit. Make sure you do put some um, Loctite thread sealant on there. Um, very, very important, guys. So. If you have any questions about how your pump works, um, if there's something wrong with it, they are pretty easy to fix or replace. Um, we repair all ours, so we've got a fully stocked workshop here. We build all of our, all of our own um, motors and pumps here. So if you have any questions, guys, feel free to ask. Um, I'm not the most clued up on the belt drives. Um, I've only got one belt drive pumping in the entire fleet. All of ours are the gearbox reduction box drives, which I'm a lot more clued up on. Um, so if you have any questions, guys, about how it works, just leave them in the description, in the comments below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. Have a great day, guys.